I, I, I'm sure she's here. Uh, would all of you in the room please just help me look for Heidi for a second, would you? Oh. God, you know her like a book. Where the hell is she? She promised me she'd be here. Mr. Bromwich. Yes. Mrs. Bromwich is your daughter. Where is she? I don't know where she is. The trip has already begun. Where is Heidi? Oh, who knows? She could be in a million places. You know, she's a tramp. <laughs> if, if she comes, will you please send her up on stage? Thank you. I'm not going to pat her. I don't give a shit. I'll just kill myself. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Heidi will be here in just a minute. Hey, what is it? Who are you? Who are these thin girls? Oh, my God. What is going on here? This is a tribute. Slow down and grow up. What's going on here is a tribute to Heidi Abramowitz. Heidi Abramowitz? We thought this was the Mother Teresa tribute. Mother Teresa tribute? You should have turned left, Mimbos. Mother Teresa's in the Caligula room, okay? Actually... When you think about it, Mother Teresa and Heidi Abramas have a lot in common. They both won peace prizes. <laughs> well, over, over the years, I've often mentioned my hometown, Larchmont, New York, which happens to also be Heidi's hometown. I think you've heard me sometimes on television doing jokes how small Larchmont is. We're so small, we have a mirror at one end. But I don't know if I ever told you... Oh, <laughs> I should have told that joke more times. But... <laughs> I don't know if I've ever said how wealthy a community Larchmont is. Well, tonight, please see for yourself Larchmont, New York, a visit there to discover what kind of a town would produce a Heidi Abramowitz. Hi, I'm Robin Leach. We're visiting Larchmont, New York, one of the most affluent communities in the world. This is the ghetto area, so named because it is more than 20 miles to the nearest Neiman Marcus. And this is the town bag lady. And here comes the Larchmont Volunteer Fire Department, the nation's largest consumer of Perrier. Larchmontians are so rich, the paper boy was William Randolph Hearst, and yet they're simple people just like you and me. Here's a note for the milkman. Please leave two quarts of milk, a pint of cottage cheese, and a dozen Fabergé eggs. I'm standing outside one of Larchmont's most famous historical sites, the Heidi Abramowitz family estate, the home where Heidi once lived contented as a child and very satisfied as a teenager. <laughs> and I might add, it's also Larchmont's most popular tourist attraction. The home draws about 20,000 visitors a year, many of them boys and girls seeking their real mother. The home is open from nine to five. It used to be open all night, but that's when Heidi lived here. Before we go inside, let's take a visit to the gift shop. Actually, it used to be the family garage. Heidi and her little friends used to put on after school plays here. Of human bondage ran 11 and a half years. Admission was free, but a visit to the dressing room was $30 a half hour. This is an answering machine that only says yes. yes. A cassette featuring the Heidi Abramowitz 30 minute makeout. Here's something for the girl who is sports minded, a season pass to the Los Angeles Raiders locker room. Here's a goodbye for only $22.50, leather pantyhose. And for the girl who is impatient, Ziploc lingerie. His and herpes towels. And over here are the Heidi Abramowitz series of little silver books. What that rash means, how to open a ketchup bottle with your tongue, how to say yes in Swahili, and how to say oh baby in sign language. So now, let's go inside. And this is the living room that Heidi grew up in. Over here in this bookshelf, we find Heidi's photo albums which contain pictures of many of the men that she's been with. As you can see, they are all leather bound, just like many of the men she's been with. <laughs> this was Heidi's favorite couch where she entertained many of her admirers. This is how it worked. 
You're the best. Next. You're the best. Next. You're the best. Next. According to the brochure, this Next. couch helped put Heidi through college. Next. But I think the most fascinating part of our tour Next. lies upstairs. Next. And here we are at the entrance to Heidi's bedroom, Larchmont's most popular night spot. More men got lucky in this room than in all of Monte Carlo. I think you'll find the decor quite accurately reflects the active lifestyle of Heidi's teenage years. It was in this room that Heidi outscored her high school basketball team. One of the most... One of the most unusual features of Heidi's bedroom is the bed itself, and this is Heidi's bed. According to the brochure, the only way Heidi could sleep comfortably was to lie on her back with her feet out of the window. She was in the back seat of so many cars, she was 30 before she realized the front seat was not optional equipment. Like most popular teenagers, Heidi needed her own phone. And here is Heidi's desk and her study lamp. Heidi spent hours under this lamp until she had it moved to her bedroom. And here, is Heidi's hobby box. <laughs> and now, as I leave Heidi's bedroom in the exact same way so many others have left before me, I wonder what have we learned about this compelling, charismatic nymph we call Heidi Abramowitz. I think birds on the Abramowitz family crest say it all. I knew we shouldn't have held this tribute in Caesar's palace. How many rooms are there? 1,600. Oh, God. Bringing Heidi to a place like this is like asking Joan Crawford to manage a daycare center. I've got to find her. Jason, would you call the house detective? Sure. Great. And would you call security? Mm -hmm. Hi, Thank partner. You. you found her, right? All systems are go. <laughs> Little astronaut talk. Well, as a matter of fact, no. Uh, no. You better stand by with another program. A rerun, OK? Oh, I see. I'm afraid that you don't understand. Our audience wants new product, fresh faces, new ideas. I mean, we just signed Connie Francis. Well, then we better find Heidi Abramowitz. You're right. Where would you go for quick, cheap sex? Well, I'm flattered, Joan. But frankly, the idea is repugnant. I mean, you have also got a show to do, and I have got to find Heidi. No, oh, Joan, you know, your attention, please. Sex. Does it repel you like it does me? Flesh on flesh, body on body. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'd rather not talk about sex on television, if you don't mind. I have no sex appeal. Would you excuse me? I respect your pain, Joan. Joan Rivers, a woman whose womb cries out. It does not! You bet it does. Joan Rivers, mother, wife, and now ventriloquist. <laughs> People wanted to be here tonight, but even more didn't. So here they are, through the magic and expense of videotape. I met Heidi years ago when she was a stewardess, and it touched me deeply when I heard that she had been fired. I guess the airline officials just didn't like telling the passengers, thanks for flying the friendly thighs of United. Just remember, Heidi, love is never having to say, wait, mister, you've got change coming. As mayor of New York, I asked Heidi if she'd like to have the key to the city. She said she'd rather have the key to my apartment. You know, Heidi, you've heard the old expression, it doesn't matter what they say about you so long as they spell your name right. Well, I've checked all the phone booths in Hollywood. It's right. It is a real pleasure to be here on this suspicious occasion. Some of you may have heard that I am an ordained minister now, so it's not my job to judge anyone. I'm just supposed to care for my flock, but Heidi, None of them have been flocking around as much as you have. Sorry, no listing for a Heidi Abramowitz. Operator, Heidi's got to be listed. Sorry. Try the yellow pages. What? Look under public utilities. Yes. She used to have her own ad. Heidi, I can always count on you to help me make it through the night. Of course, I'm not alone. She's a tramp. All right, so maybe the girl is a tramp. I mean, really? Kraft named a spread after her. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the audience tonight is Heidi's kindly pediatrician. To tell you more about her early years, who better than the man who delivered that little bundle of trash, Dr. Alvin 